today. We find out if this band will make you say ready, set, go or ready, set, no on pop etymology. <laughs> So uh, my name is Russell Perkle. This is Pop Etymology, a look at pop music and linguistics at the same time. Uh, Hannah, I am also uh, on Pop Etymology, a look of, at linguistics in the American... Would you stop that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I am also uh, uh, on this podcast. Yes, you are also here. Yeah. Uh, both hosts... No co-hosts here, just hosts. And mm -hmm. Hannah, what was our song this week? So the song that we just chose this week is uh, called um, Love Like Woe by The Ready Set. And it's the first song that came to mind when you first proposed this podcast to me because it's the song that made me realize maybe music's not for everyone. Maybe <laughs> it's just something that's for some people and some people just will never get it. And that's okay. Yeah, and actually, I even think I remember your snarky Facebook post about this band, about this song, like, five years ago, which was still, like, not topical even then, since this song <laughs> is actually 11 years old. <laughs> that is true. It is, um, it is uh, uniquely topical, being uh, 11 years old. Um, well, interestingly, I did write down a couple of things that 2010 had in common with 2021. For instance, oh. we were dealing with a global pandemic, okay. um, the pandemic of the swine flu. Oh. Um, and we had, um, do you remember Snowmageddon? No, I don't. Okay. But well, it, it sounds like, like if uh, Bruce Willis made a uh, sequel to Armageddon, but it was a Christmas movie like everybody says Die Hard was. Yes. Well, it was a, it was a series of blizzards over like a, a two-week period. Um, and each of the uh, blizzards had a different name. There was Snowmageddon. Mm -hmm. There was the Snowpocalypse. My favorite was in February uh, of 2010. It was called Snowmageddon Snowverkill. <laughs> and then um, there was a there was a snow machini alfredo because it was so white and saucy <laughs> <laughs> that's probably my favorite but yeah so we had like a crazy snowstorm this year at least here mm -hmm. in louisiana i don't know if it was uh nationwide news or, or whatever yeah it feels like for some reason the weather patterns have just been getting wilder and wilder with time so and I, we we're also doing the uh, 2010 winter olympics really no kidding wow yeah so now we got the summer ish olympics ish and so yeah so maybe you're right it's a great time to like reboot this song so if uh if uh love like woe by ready set were like re released rebooted in 2021 like first off who you getting who's gonna be the big stars like the Ooh. stunt casting super band singing uh, love like Woe 2021. Love oh. like, lo love like Co. <laughs> right? Love like, oh, what, ooh, what would be hashtag love like? Love like Co. Ronavirus. Right? Uh, yeah. Oh, I love that's, that. That's one. a bit better. That's Slightly a less clumsy or more, more uh, so. No, no, no. It's it's a perfect, like, uh, take it out of the oven right now because that is done. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, uh, my ideal pick, I think, would be Harry Styles, uh, because I think that he could really pull off that quintessential 2010 haircut that I remember. I mean, I um, think he was there, right? He was there in 2010. Was oh, he presumably. Not, how old is this guy? I mean, uh, he may have been 10 years old, but I. But presumably. they were like originally a child band, right? Like this. Um, well, how old was one, 1D? One, He's a 1D guy, right? One Direction. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't think they were ever a child band. <laughs> they were never That's... children. They're grown <laughs> in a lab with the clone technology from every clone movie ever made. <laughs> when was when was One Direction a thing? <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Harry Styles. 
they were formed in 2010. Ah, wow. see, okay. there you go. It's all it's all really coming together. This is like a Slumdog Millionaire, where all these little things build up for him to become a millionaire. This could be this this song, this reboot can make a million dollars. Yeah. So before I get into what the 2010 landscape was like. Uh, what are some things that you remember about 2000? Oh, no, let's talk about the song first. The song, <laughs> the song comes first. Roger. Sure, let's finally get to it. So it's this is the funniest thing about this podcast is like we want to talk about uh, linguistics, but maybe we're shy or something because we put like five, like five steps before oh, yeah. <laughs> you get to it. You know, we just keep trying to build more on top of it. But I think this is kind of like... A, it's like a, I think we're just kind of like a dramatic geniuses, right? Because we're like building this suspense. What will they really mm. say? What do they think about the song? We're really what is reinventing podcasts. I, you know, I will say for me, I never heard of the song. I, I don't, okay, I'd never heard it before in my life. Before I sent it to you, before I, you had never heard the song before? Never even heard the, the band Ready Set before. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I don't know. Is it? Is it a pop song even? So my answer for this one uh, is rooted in the fact that I was born in 1992. I graduated high school Humble in right. 2010. Um, and so I was really like the prime. If anybody was going to listen to the song, it's me and my graduating class. You, um, you danced to the song at your sen senior prom. I guess. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This was playing at my senior prom. <laughs> And I do not remember a lot about my senior prom. I do remember that I broke at least one wine glass to this song on accident with my elbow. <laughs> Out of uh, anger, <laughs> like displaced anger. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a very aggressive uh, chicken dance. Is this um, why? Is this why you don't like this song? Oh, this is a spoiler. But well, maybe you do like this song. But if you were to not like the song, would it be? Because actually you have this like uh, PTSD from this elbow glass injury. Hypothetically, if I were to hate the song with every fiber of my being, I would have hated it before prom night. That's a good point. So, <laughs> all right. So um, I guess we can get into it by asking Hannah, what were yes. your impressions of this song? Did you listen to it again in preparation? I did, and it has been a couple of years until I had listened to it, uh, since I had listened to it last, um, uh, for a very good reason, I think. Um, the first time I listened to it, uh, I remember that I liked it a lot, because it was a bop, and it was by one of those like super forgettable 2010s emo bands. Um, Is it? This is the last thing I would describe these guys as. Oh, did you emo Google band. them? No, no, but just from listening to this this one song. Oh, you know, I well, didn't emo, think emo, emo meant like emotional, not necessarily, oh, everything's dark and I just want to die. But, oh, um, see, when I think of emo, I think of like a specific genre. You know, it's like if you say like rock music, you don't mean like any music that rocks the room or something, you know. It's like, to me, emo is like bands like, I don't know, The Used, Taking Back Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll stop listening because I'm, I will be totally inaccurate on like half of them. my chemical romance fallout boy. I think about as emo, you know, it's like a, it's like a genre, you know? Oh, yes. Uh, well, the ready set was in the same category as like, um, oh God, there was this one summer anthem that I was a, like a huge fun, but this was like, um, like I think of that, I think a little bit of that, like fun, like, Tonight we are young song. When I heard this, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that? Three hundred three. That's fun. The the name of this band is Fun. I think they have some periods there in it. Like it's an initial. Okay. Well, I should have done some more research on bands that I. No, that's the point. So like about. It's 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 all about like heavy research on the etymology part and really no research on the music part. <laughs> you know. On and that's our one that rule. Being worthwhile, absolutely. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the, uh, just like as a rundown of the lyrics, um, what are your impressions of the lyrics of 
well, I think I should say my impression until after yours, because I have some thoughts that should be somehow in response to your thoughts. But I will say about the song itself, like one thing that I really felt when I was listening to the song is it's basically like the kids bop version of itself, right? <laughs> this is like the most like music now sounds like it's for babies of anything I've heard since that, like uh, Taylor Swift and uh, the guy from maybe it was My Chemical Romance. Uh, that song they did, it was called like You or something. I don't know. Taylor Swift did a collaboration. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Anyway, so I mean, it's like it's just so like soft and it sounds so like kind of just like something you would sing to like a three-year-old in like a preschool class where they all have to like clap or like <laughs> turn around something like this it's like it's like the hokey pokey of our generation to i agree a lot that of it talks about drugs absolutely nothing and i think that's a, a big reason that i liked it when i was a kid uh and I'll, I'll clarify i liked it the first time i heard it and then i read the lyrics because that's how i usually listen to music is i listen to the music to see if i like it then i read the lyrics see if there's anything like i could hate about it because i, I don't really uh, process lyrics out <laughs> of listening to them you want to uh, make sure there's nothing that would like if you said you like that song that people would think you're a bad person like make sure there's no <laughs> that's a little bit of it yeah yeah i don't want to like any songs that get me canceled right. yeah it's like <laughs> you really like that eminem brianna song until you realize that it's like about like spousal abuse or whatever it's about oh dude oh no brianna why <laughs> but no it's like yeah but it's more like eminem why it's like he's this one artist that has this power to like normalize any like crazy problematic thing you know like yeah. Eminem gets a pass on everything. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying that's the way it is. It is what it is, you know. You know, he was born on the same day as my father, and my Did dad you know... has always lived in Eminem's shadow. Wow, that's so amazing. But did you know that Eminem is like one year younger than Snoop Dogg? It's like they seem like totally different generations, you know? Yeah. Really weird. Wild. I put Snoop Dogg in the same generation as Martha Stewart. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's true too. I guess Eminem <laughs> could be right there alongside her and same like, uh, like uh, Martha Stewart's definitely to... older than my dad. Seems like it. Seems like yeah. I, I've met your dad and uh, he he doesn't have this same kind of like voice where it sounds like they're like talking inward into their own body. Like uh, oh, the yes. voice that Martha Stewart shares with that one villain from uh, uh, Avengers uh, Infinity War. Ooh. But I was going to say something like the other thing I was thinking on this on this topic of like it sounds like a song made for children in like a kindergarten is like it has this part where they make like a kind of like a oh, 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 oh or something like that. And I think this has to be there for it to be a pop song like with you take this out there's nothing there to make you think okay i'm listening to like a contemporary kind of rocky poppy oh. song you know and it's like this is actually i think it's in a lot of songs it's kind of like you do some kind of an o and then you go up like an octave or a fifth and then you go back mm. down you know whoa oh whoa, whoa yeah sure sure yeah or, or it's like, what was that, like, uh, California Girls or something by Ka Katy Perry, where she's like, whoa, whoa, something like oh, that. Whoa, whoa. Oh, okay. you know what? We could probably do a whole episode. on. No, the the, we can't. It's already whole, exists whole, somewhere. Whole, I remember whole, reading whole. about this on the Internet like 20 years ago or something. So uh, probably in 2010 when this came out. Probably. Yeah. There was a lot of woes. Speaking of yeah. woes. That's the reason that I only liked it the first time, because I thought that when he said it was a love like whoa, he was indicating W-O-A-H, you know, mm -hmm. like, whoa. <laughs> like a real Bill and Ted love experience, right? Yes, a real, a real Bill and <laughs> real Ted. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> oh, my God. It's coming. It's all coming back to Keanu Reeves. I'm 
desperately disappointed in myself. <laughs> um, so uh, I had assumed that it was a love like, whoa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a love like, whoa, or a love, <laughs> or a love like, like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> because if you look at the rest of the lyrics, you're indicating uh, something that's very tumultuous, something that's a very up and down relationship. Um, perhaps if it was a, a, a ride, it would be a roller coaster. Uh -huh. And Hannah, I'm just curious, are you equally angry that the classic 80s song, bow, bow, chick -chick is not about like a, like a buddy cop relationship between a dog and a chicken? Oh, my god why can't you write all of these musics <laughs> this russell song. go back in time and make that song about that you know it's like if you were a weird owl but a weird owl that didn't really change the lyrics just just <laughs> change the intention of the lyrics <laughs> 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 and that's your whole stick you sing the same song but you're like but when i see it when i sing it it's about this you know <laughs> If it hasn't been done before, then it should be. Who's um, to say it hasn't really? How would you know it had even been done? But anyway, so so love like whoa, and so it's you're actually you're spelled W O E. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Now W O E. I don't know if you know this, Russell. Um, according to the uh, Webster's Dictionary, which is a sin, I know, is a podcasting sin. <laughs> yeah, Speech but, 101, you always mention the dictionary definition of whatever you're talking about. <laughs> it's etymology. What do you want me to do? Uh, woe, W-O-E, uh, indicates great sorrow or distress. More of a, It's meant to convey more of a melancholic feeling. There is nothing in this song that indicates any degree of melancholy whatsoever. Um, just for fun, what do you suppose the uh, etymology of the word woe is? Okay, that's a really great question. So it's like, so we know it's somehow connected to um, like sadness or something now. And mm -hmm. like we talked about last time in our uh, Lost Forever Secret first episode, <laughs> this is actually episode two. Uh, any listeners who are keeping count? Um, episode two, the pilot. <laughs> yeah, episode two. The pilot, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a low budget uh, sci fi movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like eventually we'll, we'll release uh, episode one on the Patreon that we'll eventually have. And like <laughs> listeners will be able to just fill in your part. So I'll be talking and then it's like a create your own podcast adventure. Oh, you like know? They'll say what you say. Yeah. Oh, choose your own adventure. Totally. I love that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> but, um, gosh, what was I even thinking? Okay, so whoa, what could it possibly? So, of course, we have other words from whoa, like woeful, <laughs> and perhaps that's the only one. Um, well, but, but woe itself, I think if it's from anything, maybe it could be kind of from something like Vox for voice <laughs> and then have some connection like um, um, you're making some like wailing sounds. So somehow they're connected there. But I suspect just like a word like O oh, or ho, or um, even I heard recently that in many languages, there's a word like so that oftentimes begins uh, things people say, right? Just so like we do in English sometimes, but it's mm -hmm. it just seems to be there because like it's it's just a sound that people like to make at the start of stuff and it eventually becomes a word. But I think whoa, maybe it's something like this. It's a little bit onomona onomatopoeia ish or something. I don't know. Onomatopoetic. There you go. Yeah, there you uh -huh. go. Which is a fun word to say. Okay, hang on just a second. Let me let the prince in again. Okay, but keep your mouth shut, okay? Frank. So your instincts are pretty darn good as far as the um, origins of woe. Um, it is onomatopoetic. It is uh, meant, it's an exclamation from the old Germanic and Middle English. Um, uh, wah! 
<laughs> so, so are you saying this is like a like a Wario War, Waluigi type <laughs> situation? That's exactly what I am saying. I am saying that uh, according to uh, the etymology of the word woe, which is based in Middle English and, and Old Germanic, uh, woe comes from the Old Middle English wah, <laughs> which is a natural exclamation of lament. Sure, I'm, it's like Wario is some kind of time lord, like skipping through time and influencing the timeline. It's, he's like a he's a real Loki type, you know. Concept, Warioki. <laughs> Wa Loki, I think. Wo Loki. Woki. 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 That's it. Yes, Woki Oki. I love it. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, so it's kind of just generally like a sound, like saying like you or ah. Or uh -huh. wow. Or, um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, just a natural exclamation that you, ah, yeah, wow, you know. Um, so as I is woe. I mean, as is W H O A, which that's another really, I think that's another really difficult debate that, you know, I, I feel it's a little frictiony to bring it up, but, you know, we're kind of on the opposite side of that because I couldn't help but notice earlier you said W O A H. Yes, I did say that. Which I'm of the opinion it should be W H O A. <gasps> oh, this is what happens when two etymology nerds collide. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I think this is one of these things we should just put it aside and never speak of it because otherwise I think it'll probably like just tear our if friendship. If you tell apart. me that you're in favor of the Oxford comma, I am breaking up with you. I have no opinions about the Oxford really Zero. okay yeah. but uh anyways but yeah so it's interesting because of course then that means that woe was in and woe was in what? they're they're mm -hmm. kind of the same thing right they're both just kind of these kind of natural uh verbalizations that are not that started out as being not mm -hmm. actual words so in some sense maybe it is the same word you know okay i might be coming back around on this but if 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 the ready set looks anything like my depiction of the ready set when I listen to the song again, um, because I did do a drawing of who I think the ready set looks like. The whole band I, or one oh, person? You think the ready set is one guy? Yeah, like there's the sense. weekend, there's sure. the ready set. Sure, yeah, makes yeah. a lot of sense. As you can see. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I, I got some, some vibe like that for sure. Yeah. He looks the, very uh, scene kid esque. And, yeah, and, uh, this is what I remember everybody wearing in high school. I couldn't remember actually uh, if 2010 was when people started wearing the really tight jeans, or if they were still into like the uh, pants that touch the ground. So I gave them both. I think it was tight jeans, because I okay. think now in some ways we're a bit out of it. This is more for a fashion con con contest podcast. Uh, but I think we're past it. So I think it must have been 2010 zero. I do have a very, very, I'm very confident that the ready set wore, wore fingerless gloves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that you can, you can really hear them. In oh yeah. The song. You can see, you can hear how free those passive, fingers. Uh, yeah. aspect in, in, uh, early emo music mm -hmm. that I can really appreciate. So, uh, real quick. Name a woeful weather. Woeful weather? Uh-huh. That's like if it's like gray, like dreary, right? Any woeful weather. Gray, dreary. If, huh. if, if you said that something was, that the weather pattern was woeful or like mm -hmm. woe. Yeah, a snowstorm or something, I guess. Okay. That's a good answer. You think the song is about snowmageddon? No, it's not. But it is about, quote, a pretty little windstorm on the boulevard. Yeah, I heard that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Also, and then, perhaps a hurricane? It's also about a pretty sweet pill that he takes be mm -hmm. to avoid an addiction, but also because it's a superstition of his to take this. This was the part that really I had the hardest time trying to even give him the benefit of the doubt that this had any kind of connection to the reality that we live in, you know? I so say. could it be that his attraction to this girl is a placebo effect? Maybe, or maybe it's like, 
aren't there these countries where if you're addicted to heroin, you go to a government facility and they give you like, I want to say fentanyl, but fentanyl still sounds too extreme. But there's some like synthetic they give you, right? Uh, they do um, um, like a methadone clinic, do you mean? Yeah, yeah it must be methadone. Yeah. Uh -huh. So maybe this is a song about like a heroin addiction, not really a woman at all. And then he's like talking about, you know, he's, he gets methadone instead. You know, if we had like the rights to certain sound clips at this point, we would play the sound clip from Twilight, wherein Edward confesses that Bella is his own personal brand of heroin. <laughs> yeah. It turns out Edward that a Cullen, lot... also a famous former heroin addict. <laughs> it turns out that a lot of uh, love songs are kind of, and love like comparisons are pretty drug addled. Yeah, and that's one thing that really I think about a lot is, you know, it's like, uh, it, there's, there's, of course, there's a lot of like, of course, drinking in songs and smoking weed and even some like coke use and stuff. But something about the pill use, I always feel kind of advertised to, you know, it's just weird <laughs> to talk specifically about some pill. It's like um, uh, Gunna, this rapper, he's always talking about Adderall and it's like, why is that like a brag drug to talk about Adderall? It's a very but okay. strange thing. Yeah. I mean, it's like, okay, you need some kind of help to be productive, I guess. I mean, that's a little, a little sad for you that you're dependent on that, but. I mean, there's nothing saying that like, if you need Adderall to control uh, uh, your ADHD or to make like your, if you like legitimately need Adderall, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure that. Yeah, I guess you can also be a rapper or whatever, but it's like it really seems like a promotional uh, message a lot of times. Like he's saying, does like he actually say Adderall? Pill. Oh yeah, yeah. For, okay. Well, he says Addy. Is... Okay, fair enough. He says Addy. Okay. It would be a little weird if he said it wrong. I'm sure. No, because it's like. The America is the only country that actually advertises medication. Like, you're not going to go to Great Britain and get like two minute long Cialis commercials, or or um, you're not going to go to Canada and get like freaking bombarded with Tylenol commercials. It's just, it's just not something that other countries do. It's true. You think it's like, uh, you know, uh, Adam ruins everything. Did that episode about how like breakfast? No, it, it was uh, uh, what's the John Oliver one? Last week tonight, weekly Last update. Week tonight, John there you go. Oliver? Yes. Something with a week. Um, <laughs> everybody but us knows what this is called already, so it doesn't matter. Um, he was talking about how like breakfast was something that like the pork industry and the dairy and egg industry kind of like manufactured this idea that you have to have this big breakfast you know and then it became of course a part of culture and everything and it's in like art and stuff in art <laughs> you know that, that famous <laughs> picasso painting of a breakfast <laughs> but, but picasso's the mcmuffin <laughs> i would love it <laughs> it's, it's, it's i'm so loving it too cute. yeah i would make love it <laughs> um <laughs> But I lost my train of thought a little bit. Breakfast um, is propaganda. Yeah, well, yeah, of course it's propaganda, but it's like one of these things where it finds its way into just normal culture in a way that kind of imitates the same, like, very insistent How messaging of the commercials. How weird is capitalism, man? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so, like, anyways, I guess we're pretty far off topic now, so I'll... I'll talk about the elephant in the room, which is that I think that reading the lyrics of the song, I could see an argument for this double meaning of woe, because he's talking about, like you say, the windstorm. He talks about like an addiction. He talks about something like getting run over by a car or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but none of that is melancholic. It's it's woeful in that it's like uh like uh some distressing situation, right? I mean, I suppose, but uh, contemporary usage of the word woe is uh, almost universally melancholic. If woe, woe is me, woe betides you, woe is... Uh, I think it's like, to me, it feels a little like it's about suffering, right? 
Mm, okay. And there could be a, a, a sort of a more biblical explanation for that. That's <laughs> a, a, that is a very Jobish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's true. Job seemed to be uh, in a state of woe. <laughs> but yeah. And it was a very tumultuous couple of months. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, but I mean, I, I think that I don't know that that meaning has really gotten across. Like, I don't think it's an effective uh, play on words, I, I guess. No, I'll say. tell you what I think it Not is. What I'm pretty sure it is. I think it's a dude who is like, oh man, look, whoa sounds like whoa. Yeah, That'd sure. Make it like so deep, right? Dude? I think it's really true. I mean, I think that is basically it. I mean, it's like this kind of thing in a lot of pop culture type stuff where you you change it a little, make it a little wrong or a little weird just to stand out. But like the first thing that came to my mind actually is not really the same thing, but you know, there's this Drake song, Hotline Bling, you know, like B-L-I-N-G. And of course he's saying like blink, you know, this is what he intends by this word. But it's it's more fun, more interesting, more referential to the culture and the language if you say bling. You know, it kind of stands out. And I think it's the same kind of strategy. I see. I see. Now, it, I do know that song because of the meme. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's it. End of reasons I know that song. <laughs> but I did, when you were um, talking about what you uh, what you wanted to research, you did hint a little bit at something called an egg corn. Yeah, and yeah, I'm sure. Dying to hear what an egg corn is. Right. So, as often happens, I I think I do research in the wrong direction because it's like <laughs> I I start with this idea that there is something that I want to find. And then I look, and oftentimes I don't find exactly what I'm looking for. And so on this, I was I was thinking about how, you know, there's you could imagine a case where woe might over time replace this other spelling of woe, uh, especially since, of course, W-O-E, much simpler, uh, much mm -hmm. easier to understand and spell. And of course, it doesn't have the variation between W-H-O-A and W-O-A-H. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So it's like avoids this whole trick here and you see that a little bit in the history of words and some kind of boring ones like for instance uh sneak uh and then is the past tense sneaked or is it snuck well actually it depends on who you ask but in contemporary english and style guides usually people will say snuck and you know mm -hmm. it looks like in some way this was um I'm trying to think if there's any similar example, but not so much. But this one is actually an interesting example because usually words go in the other direction. Usually words that are irregular verbs, over time, they're more likely to become regular, right? So, sure. But sometimes it happens the other way too, depending on are there are there similar words around them, right? Okay. So that's, that's one form. It's, um, it's something called solecism. But actually, solecism is whenever it's still wrong. And I may have just mispronounced that a little bit, a little disclaimer. Uh, no one get too angry at me. Um, <laughs> but uh, like an egg corn, this is a, a whole nother thing where you hear something, sometimes a song lyric, but could be anything else. And you mishear the uh, exact thing you heard. And so you say something that's a little different. Uh, usually these are like, funny things or something um but they may like make more sense they may be just kind of little variations or something like that um so like for instance one of the one of the ones that i think is pretty close to becoming more or less a accepted version and probably the old one will eventually fall away is but naked you know of course, the oh. original the original is, of course, what? Buck. Buck naked. naked. Sure, sure. But this idea of being buck naked, what does it mean in our modern concept of the word buck? Not mm. so much. You know, uh, used to have a meaning something like 
completely or something. But butt naked, of course, seems intuitively to make sense, right? It's somehow, like, I guess, your butt showing or, or just using the butt for the emphasis in the same way we would say like ass or something. Yeah. 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 So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, so these are, this is one example of an egg corn that maybe is starting to completely replace already has some dominance in the culture. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but some other ones that are maybe less like more funny and less likely to really have any kind of functional impact on the, the language. Right, there's this famous one from that uh, Credence Clearwater Revival song. Uh, he mm, says, CCR. <laughs> he said, you apparently are more passionate about them than I am. Uh, he, he says, um, hate classic rock, by the other hand. Just don't care for it, no. Um, <laughs> he says, there's a bad moon on the rise. And famously, people mishear this as, there's a bathroom on the right. Right? <laughs> I don't know if you've heard this before. And um, other ones, for instance, like uh, chicken pox, of course, many people as a child, I remember I thought it was chicken spots, makes way more sense. Um, another one, dog eat dog world. Uh, I, I have trouble believing anyone actually makes this mistake, but uh, some people claim to have heard doggy dog world, like doggy dog world. Yeah. Things like that. So that's a. I was convinced that it was a doggy dog world for the first freaking twenty years of my life. <laughs> but what would that be? What what exactly would they be the trying to convey? Possible. Yeah, a but that doesn't really world? seem like people seem pretty like uh, cynical when they say it's a doggy dog world. So I, I always when I yeah, when I thought that, that it was a doggy dog world, I always assumed that it's like, oh, cheer up, me. There's lots of dogs here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So you're saying like they say something, you say something bad, and they reply, "It's a doggy dog world," and you thought they were trying to cheer you up. They're yeah. like saying, "At least it's a doggy dog world." Right? Yeah. Yeah. At least There's we're not no other in the... planet in this entire solar system that you could be born on that has dogs. That makes great sense. That mm -hmm. Makes great sense. One of the uh, so I'm I'm kind of talking about things that. For me, of course, they're not exactly egg corns because egg corns is this very specific thing where you usually hear something in a song or something and you misinterpret it in kind of a funny way. But to me, it's a it's a subcategory of solacism or even, as you said, malapropism, where um, there's some mis misunderstanding of a word or simply saying the wrong word, uh, wrong grammar, whatever, uh, that eventually and this is not included in the idea of a solecism, eventually it becomes right, right? So, mm -hmm. so one I found, and this one is actually controversial because I don't see, <laughs> I, this is my opinion, this is my, my feeling about it, not exactly what is explicitly stated in the, in the research, like the word aggravated. So the word aggravated, this root here is grav, from gravity, mm -hmm. from grave. This means like heavy, right? Right. So aggravated means something like burdened, actually, right? But generally now we use it to mean something like irritated, a word coming from ear, from ire, for to make someone angry, right? To aggravate my um, my allergies, sure. to yeah. aggravate my sister. Yeah, yeah, it's like to stir it up, to make it inflamed, angry, much different from this idea of just like weighing someone down, which would be, even in a figurative sense, it would be something more closer to like to worry somebody, right? Mm -hmm. So my opinion of how this change happened is that, of course, we have a word like aggression, you know, which really does give this sense of like to become angry, more attackful towards someone, something, right? And so because mm -hmm. of this kind of like false friends relationship, of one word being real close to another and that meaning being not so hard to get to on the ah. side there, you have this kind of transference, you know. That makes an awful lot of sense. But okay. I don't know. But that's that's the kind of idea I had when I was thinking about this word whoa, because you know, it it's it's perfect. very close in terms of spelling, in terms of sound, of course it's the same. And you know, they're both expressing some kind of like extreme feeling about something something like that you know? so your argument is that uh the 
Ready Set was a band ahead of his time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, another, I'll, I'll just give you a few more, but I'll give it kind of rapid fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, less and fewer. You know, of course, I think probably we I know die on this the difference. But less and fewer is a distinct difference. Exactly. If you exactly. use less when you mean fewer, then you need to go back to primary school. What? I've, I can't tell at this point, are you for or against the distinction? I am absolutely for the distinction. For Words the distinction. mean things, Russell. Hang on just a sec. Sure. She's Hi. left the podcast. We're such a whiny. Sorry, Frankie decided that he wanted to go outside and then he wanted to come inside. And he's outside now, but. Now I know, I know you just needed the time to cool off. We got a little <sighs> angry about it. It's so but, aggravating. But of course, we see fewer disappear, you know. And I think that even though less is, of course, wrong on some level, I think eventually Every that will level. be right. I think that'll be the correct one, you know. And uh, so this is the kind of thing I think happens. And a lot of times when you have words that they either have a similar place or they have a similar meaning, like uh, enormity means like uh, some very extremely bad problem, right? Yes. The enormity of their offense or something. But of course, we use it to mean like very big, right? Because it, it seems a little like uh, enormous. Enormous, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, ironic, you know, a word that famously has lost its original <laughs> intention here. I think honestly, because it's really confusing. <laughs> it's we'll very, have to cover that. Inside. It's very hard to understand. Uh, lay. So this yes. word lie, right? We we still say lie down, right? Sometimes we don't always. A lot of people say lay down and it's fine. We totally understand what they mean. But what is the past tense of lie? Yesterday I? Oh, yesterday I lied? Lay. L A Y. Oh. Has oh. completely disappeared, right? What is the present? Uh, what is the participle, right? I have always blank here oh. in the same bed. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Now I feel dumb. Sorry, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, so team me up again. Team me up again. I got it. What all is right. the uh, past participle of lie, as in to sleep? Uh, lane. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Exactly right. But I have never in my life heard anyone say I have lane. Right. So we <laughs> we completely got rid of it because it, it's just a little weird. It's a little different. So even though we still keep lie, as in I lie here, whatever, as I lie down, whatever. <laughs> Uh, he has strong opinions about lie versus lay. It makes sense. Dogs, you tell dogs to lay down all the time. So you should let sleeping dogs love you. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. So these are the sort of things I'm talking about where it's like the language gets um, kind of a little bit simplified, I suppose, in some ways through um, incorrect, you know translation yeah. or not translation but incorrect use you know uh loan of course famously uh used as a verb whenever we already have a verb lend which means the mm -hmm. same thing but lend of course it's still used but not so much um moot point an interesting one in british english a moot point means something that uh, is worth debating that's right i said a moot point is something that is worth debating Really? Yeah. In United States English, of course, it means something that's not worth the name. It means the opposite of right. that. Yeah. So this is some change in the meaning of this that, at least for us here in, here in America, I haven't asked anybody in Britain. Uh, for us, this is now the accepted meaning, right? Even though it's wrong. So uh, I wonder if that song, Jesse's Girl, means something totally different in Great Britain. Is there a moot point in Jesse's Girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, uh, bringing it back to music. To All right, Hannah. Answer, but the point is probably moot. Uh huh. Well, maybe he means the point is worth debating. Oh, maybe, maybe. he intends it. Maybe, maybe it's a more proactive song thinks, in the UK. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just the the song just means something different there. <laughs> okay, so uh, I know you you took a look at some like slang and words that are characteristic of the 2010. So. Yes. Uh, what'd you find there? I would like to give you a pop quiz. Mm. Why are you testing me on my fun podcast? <laughs> because if you are wrong, it's really funny. 
I really just reach for paper like I'm going to have to do some scratch work <laughs> or something. But okay, let's hear it. I'm ready. Okay, so uh, the following words are um, words that I uh, that either became popular in the 2000s which I can't decide if we're calling it the 2000s, the aughts, or the noughties. Definitely not the noughties. I like aughts. I like aughts, too. I, I kind of do. I don't uh, know if it's really I, catching on, though, but um, I, I have to admit myself, I still just say the 2000s. Like a joke. Yeah. Just like when you're reading it, you just automatically... It's just too hard. It's like trying to invent... It's like trying to introduce your own slang, but we're trying to do it as a country, right? Trying to coin some expression for this but we all feel a little weird to be like amongst the first ones to do it you know so the uk has definitively decided that it's the naughties that i don't care for the british either i don't like classic <laughs> rock i don't like british people this is it's just who i am oh, oh we're not going to be able to cover the beatles <laughs> Um, so the following slang was either, uh, coined in the 2000s or in the 2010s. Okay. Let's hear it. Or the teens. Um, and I want you to guess, mm -hmm. uh, number one, the shit. I think this has been with us for a long time. I'm going to say the 2000s. That is correct. And it blows my mind that it's not even older. All right. Next one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was uh, coined in the, uh, in the early aughts. Amazing. How about off the chain? I think also aughts. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, you were alive during the aughts. <laughs> How about bromance? The 2010s, the teens. Ooh, what was your first experience with the word bromance? How did you know that was in the teens? It's weird because I feel like everyone heard it for the first time whenever they made that movie about it, which was... I believe it was Paul Rudd was looking for a best friend and he found uh, Jason Siegel, this guy from How I Met Your Mother. You know? Oh, right. Um, and I don't know if it was, oh, it's called like I Love You Bro or something. I think it's I Love You Man. No, I think that's a different movie, but you might be right. I don't know. No, you're probably right. You're probably right. I Love You Bro would be a whole different movie. I love with, like, you, bro Zac Efron. Like, bratty kind of. Zach Efron would be like in the movie twice. He would be both <laughs> sides of the bromance. <laughs> Uh, the double Zach. <laughs> and it would come out in the 2010s. How about I Carumba? <laughs> That's like 1990s. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually coined in the 20, in the uh, aughts. No way. There's no way. Yeah. Because it's The Simpsons. Bart used to say Simpsons, it like a super long The Simpsons long didn't say it until the aughts. Seriously. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Uh, as well as Eat My Shorts, which I did not put on this. Also the odds? Yeah. Jeez, that's insane. Uh, wow. How about Catfish? I think I heard once that that's actually an incredibly old expression, like pre-internet. But Oh, is it? That's what I heard, but I don't know. I heard that from another podcast that's not as reputable <laughs> as ours. So. <laughs> so I have Catfish was coined in the team actually uh -huh. when uh, the internet started becoming a thing uh -huh. a lot of the teen slang was, was where you really start to get uh internet um uh slang yeah i mean it seems like you would assume it would correlate to online dating right because I mean, this is oh, yeah. its main its main application okay what else you got vom vom mm -hmm. as in short for vomit yeah i think that never caught on <laughs> they're still waiting 2022 <laughs> you are not friends with a lot of mean girls no definitely not. um no that was actually uh coined in the teens okay and i don't believe you but fine <laughs> <laughs> um okay how about as if again super old no i think that's not from where you think it is because isn't that in like clueless don't they say as if yeah clueless what came out in the aunts no way yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like I'm finding out I'm younger than I thought I was. <laughs> Most of the time, oh, people are like, no way, view. that's 30 years old. But <laughs> for me, it's like the other direction. <laughs> okay. Got the anything one else? one direction, the other direction. I'm going to Google, when did Clueless come out? I'm pretty sure it was like 2010. Oh, 95. Ha. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. So... Let's let's hear it because we gotta roll through the rest of the things we got. So what else right. we got? Um, 
meet cute. To the, the aughts. That's actually the teens. It's no way. <laughs> it's that that word was around way before. I'm uh, not M E A T cute. M E E T. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and you had, uh, and the last one that I have is cool beans. No, that word's way older than any. But I suppose you could be talking about like when they become like super, super popular. Yeah, super then, popular. Okay, fair, fair enough. There was a there was a little bit of uh, resurgence of eighties culture in the aughts. Okay, fair enough. So let me roll through like rapid fire, truly rapid fire this time. A list of the words that I saw that were uh, slang for two thousand tens. And then yes. I will give you the one slang word that I found that's from the year 2010 itself, the year that the song was released. And maybe you can figure it out through process of elimination, but let's see. So adulting, flex, Ooh. lit, low key and high key, shook, fam, romance, which you already said, thirsty, shade, mood, and bay, all allegedly from this teens era. Yes. Uh, now, so what... And it's really, it's probably not too easy to get, but maybe. What word, it's not actually a word. That'll be a good hint for you. Came from Ooh. the year 2010. First okay. Um, all right. Uh, I was listening. Uh, so I want to say bromance because my research also. Oh, in... sorry. Sorry. I should mention it's not one of the ones I just mentioned. Oh, it's not one of the ones. <laughs> no, just... But I'll give you another hint then. It's, a, it's, <laughs> it's initials. Initials. Um. I see why um No, too uh, many. It's two shit. initials. Two letters. Two initials. Two um letters. YOLO. <laughs> two letters. <laughs> shit. I'm bad at this now. Um JK. A F. Ooh, that that originated in the uh, 2010. In According 2010. to a random website on the internet. Yes. Ooh, well that is definitely uh interesting AF. Sure. Okay, so uh, let's say uh, final thoughts on Love Like Whoa. Do you like it? Would you listen to it again? Does it have any place in your rotation? Um, now that I have come to terms with my pedanticness uh, and the fact that, like, it's okay that some people don't like music, it's fine. No, absolutely not. I never want to hear the song again as long as I live. And that's a, it's a very good reason that I uh, harsh. am not going to my high school reunions because they play music from the 2010s at high school reunions. And, and I'm, I just don't, I don't have it in me, Russ. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't say that I would somehow try to avoid it. I would not go out of my way to avoid this song. Um, as I would like Led Zeppelin or something. If, um, if at a wedding, if you were at a wedding and this song came on, would you dance? Would I dance? Probably not. I mean, the at, at, but that's a very specific context where the only dances I do at a wedding uh, are the the um, square dances, the the electric slide and the um, <laughs> Cupid shuffle. Because everything else, I'm too sober. It's just too risky i don't want and, and there's so much photography going on at a wedding you know it's like if you yeah. if you do something that looks really bad then it's like you're in that person's wedding doing that thing forever you know? <laughs> and what if you cause like 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 a like a hundred person pile up of dancing you know and like five people that die. is irresponsible dancing and i relate to it yeah yeah so no I, I i would not dance to this song at a wedding but if it came on at a bar and i had already started dancing because i heard another song that was good yeah i could see i i might continue to dance i don't okay. think i would stop it would not cause you to vacate the dance floor yeah exactly <laughs> and like i think I would never listen to the song again on purpose just because it's just an incredibly boring song. Like even the um, song on our uh, mythical first episode, it's kind of nice. Like uh, maybe it's because it's made in the common era. And so it sounds kind of modern and contemporary, but it has a nice sound to it. It, it has some kind of a hook feeling to it. This song is just nothing. It sounds like 
a fake song that someone would make for a TV show, like a no rights song, like something you would get if you downloaded like a video editing app and it came with some free songs. Like this seems like one of those. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, I know that I hated it, but that was cold. Man. <laughs> so uh, we don't all we don't only talk about a song and also language on this podcast. We also have a segment where we talk a, just a little bit about Eurovision, something we know even less about. And what was <laughs> our who was our Eurovision? Uh, let's say artist, musician, star this week. Well, you did the research on it, and I'm dying to hear how you pronounce his name. Well, I did look into it enough to know, more or less, although it's just still a little confusing because I believe it's Dothi, but it may be Dothi with a, th a heavier voiced th yeah, sound. Yeah, softer TH sound, but uh, I'm sure if you go to any Icelander and say, hey, what do you think of Dothi Freer? I'm sure they'll be like, ah, oh, he's aces, he dude. I do enjoy saying Daddy Freyer, though. It's, it's, oh, okay, let's makes go it sound, with Daddy, then. Makes it sound very uh, like he's like someone who would come on the Pitbull uh, serious radio station, you know. Ooh. Next up, we got Daddy Freyer with uh, Shakira and Daddy Yankee. Now, you know? that is almost entirely ridiculous because uh even though his eurovision uh, song this year was a collaboration with a different band it's really hard to imagine like any song that's any band that isn't exactly like daddy fear like collaborating you're very right yes yeah. it's hard to imagine who could he be with like it's like if he became a popular uh american like he got onto the american radio play like always they add in a rap feature now. Oh, yeah. And so it is really hard to imagine, okay, what rapper do you put with Daddy Freyer who... Megan The Stallion. I, I so. don't think they really work together, but I would certainly listen to it many, many times. And it has the great, <laughs> like, it's so, like, um, uh, shocking, you know. It's, like, such a weird juxtaposition that it somehow sticks with you. I like it. I like it. Let's do it. Ooh, Let's do it. So you, know who would, um, you, you contact... Megan oh, yeah, yeah, D. Stallion, I'll contact Daddy Fred. Which that's another one is like and coming back to the like words talking about words part of the podcast is do you think anyone ever told Megan that a stallion is a male horse? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I think it's uh she's a very um open and uh outspoken advocate for lgbtq rights I you think, think so you think my, it's like activism my impression for somebody that knows very very little about the rap world if i had to guess megan the stallion and i saw her on snl one time and that's my experience with megan the mm -hmm. stallion uh is that uh, she's talking about butch lesbians oh uh, okay nothing. yeah okay i see i see yeah it could be you could be right that's a great point yeah very very good so i didn't give her enough credit i just assumed she had, was somehow like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to say something that sounds mean. So I'll just, I assume she was mistaken about her own choice of name, but yeah, that, that makes way more sense. I think you're really probably right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So one thing I, I was looked briefly into, so this, um, this symbol here is called F, right? E-T-H, right? Uh -huh. And if it, so in English, of course, we just have the one T-H written out for two sounds, the F, which is the soft one, and the uh, theta, which is the harder one, the. Theta looks like a circle with a, a line through it. So it's and, weather and thought. Yeah, sure. Weather is the voiced one, like a theta. It's, thought yeah, is the, the theta, soft one, like a the F. Right. Weather yeah, has exactly. an F sound. So uh, I didn't do a lot of research into it because we don't have a lot of time for that. But just interesting to note. So um, the main languages this shows up in is, of course, English from Old English to Middle English. Um, Icelandic, as we know. Um, Ferrosi, Ferris. I don't know that word, so I won't oh, try Ferros, to say it again. The, uh, Ferros Islands. Uh, they are an there area in Scandinavia. I think so. Yeah, and Scandinavia as well. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Um, it was in Greek but it was oh. not in Latin. So it was something that didn't really make that trip into Latin. So this is why most of the romance languages are without it. And why if you're like a Spanish speaker or something, it gives you a lot of trouble, mm -hmm. right? 
So let me ask you, because I know that we both were big fans of uh, of um, 10 Years by Dadi Freer, mm. uh, which was his Eurovision um, song this year. What does this song tell you about living life in Iceland? Like, if you had to guess, I think just from the context of the song and this music video and uh, everybody wearing shirts with their pixelated faces on to them. me to me it suggests that they are as uh camille nanjiani terms it in his podcast indoor kids right <laughs> they seem to spend a lot of time in their room doing like inside activities like messing around with their computers and their video games and stuff because he really has this real like i guess it's this coziness that's kind of famous for this area right but kind mm -hmm. of applied to like just doing nerdy stuff on your computers, right? Yeah. Okay. I like that. So <laughs> I have to ask, so this um this song from <laughs> I forget which song I did. Uh it was I believe it was the first one, the one from last year. Not this one, not the oh, 10 Day okay. song, but the uh previous one. Hang on. In this so let me see, let me see. <laughs> So in English, in English, the song is about uh, the arrival of Daddy Frere's baby daughter. Aww. In Icelandic, the lyrics mean something completely different. It's totally different song lyrics. So of these four options, can you tell me which one is the real original Icelandic lyrics of the yes, song? Yes, yes. Okay. So is it A? Cell phone data plans in Iceland as a clever metaphor for romance. Okay. Is it B, a band from outer space coming to save the world by teaching them a new dance? Ooh. Is it C, the time he pretended to be his lesbian friend's boyfriend at a dinner with her father? Okay. Is it D, the misconceptions and confusion between Iceland and Greenland? Ooh, ooh, okay. Um... Having seen uh, 10 years and um, a little bit, and uh, the Eurovision presentation, um, I'm going to go with B. B You're, a. Right. You're right. Yes! It was I about a, genius. a band from outer space coming to save the world by teaching them a new dance. That's like Space Jam. Okay. So I have one more, let's say, quiz for you. So Ooh. I don't know if you know this, but um, Daddy Freyer, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't intentionally mispronounce someone's own name. That's incredibly rude. Uh, Dathi Freyer, let's say, uh, he's a actually distinctively tall person. I don't know if you noticed from the videos. So I have a list here of other famous people, and I think probably at least one thing or something. And uh, I want you to tell me, is Dathi Freyer taller or shorter than this person? Okay, Ooh, okay. yeah, this is, so, this is fun. The Rock Dwayne Johnson. Is Dathi Freyer taller or shorter? Ooh, uh, shoot, I'm going to go taller. Dathi Freyer is taller. And I got to tell you, oh, shoot. I have to wait till the end to tell you the rest, though. Okay, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, it will. Kind of, you'll get clues Spoilers. as you go, right? So, Michael Jordan is Dathi Frame taller or shorter? I'm gonna say Dathi is shorter than Michael Jordan. Scotty Pippen is Michael is Dathi Frame taller or shorter? Is Scotty Pippen like the weirdly tall one or the weirdly short one? I honestly don't know who Scotty Pippen is. I just I'm know he's a person. I'm going to say that Dathi Fair is taller than Scottie Pippen. That's how much I know about basketball. End of list of things I know about basketball. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rhett McLaughlin from Good Mythical Morning. Is Dathi Fair taller or shorter? I have no idea who that is. Okay. So just make a random guess. Uh, shorter. Taylor Swift, is Dathi Frey her uh, taller or shorter? Is she wearing heels? Let me see. Um, yes. She is wearing heels? Yes. 
Oh, okay. Uh, shoot. Johnny Fur is still got to be taller than her. Okay. Uh, Brienne of Tarth, the fictional character. Is she Ooh. taller or shorter? Okay, so Gwyneth Christie, I think, is um, like 6'2", I think. So Dothy's taller than her. Okay. We're, you know her height very specifically, weirdly enough. I think she's <laughs> the same height as my mom. Wow, I didn't ever know you had a tall mom. <laughs> Pete Davidson, well, the kind of uh, the, the weird comedian on Saturday Night Live. Pete Davidson. Ooh, how Pete. tall is Pete Davidson? I'm going to say Dothy's taller. Okay, and I have many, many more. Uh, Kid Laroy is uh, Dottie Fair, taller or short? Kid Laroy isn't he like a kid? He's like uh, uh, I'll say Dottie's way taller than Kid Laroy. Yeah, go Dottie. <laughs> okay, so actually, you did really well. Uh, so I'll tell you, uh, Dottie Fryer is taller than The Rock. Uh, he is actually taller than Michael Jordan by two inches. Uh, really? He is actually not taller than Scotty Pippen. Scotty Pippen turns out to be even taller than Michael Jordan, whoever oh, Scotty Pippen I'm might Pippen. be. Rhett McLaughlin, uh, he is taller than Rhett McLaughlin, taller than Taylor Swift, of course, taller than Brianna Tarr, taller than Pete Davidson, and yes, much, much taller than Kid Laroy, uh, who is actually only 5'7". Uh, Dothy Freyer himself is six feet eight inches tall six eight six eight yeah oh tall that is a tall icelandic that is somebody who comes from viking stock for sure true okay so to close the podcast um maybe we'll stick with the tradition of last time so actually we'll we'll say this uh so we were talking about um a rap feature on um, the Dothy Freyer song. So what Pokemon do you think would do the rap feature for uh, Love Like Woe? Ooh, 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 Love Like Woe, but rap. So it's gotta be uh, definitely something from Gen 1. Um, something that thinks that it's edgy, but really isn't. Um, Clefairy. <laughs> pretty sure you said like Jigglypuff last time, which is basically the same Pokemon, but it doesn't matter because last episode does not exist. So you still win. You won the quiz. I you won, won the everything. Quiz, You're Wait, today's Dylan. big winner, Hannah. Thank yes. you very much for joining us here on Pop Etymology. And we will see you uh, for the next episode, but depending on when that is. Absolutely. We'll be there. Hope you will be too. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a great night.